Herman Pullman created the Junkers Ju-87, often referred to as the Stuka, a German ground attack and dive bomber aircraft. It served the Axis in World War II and made its combat debut in 1937 with the Luftwaffe's Condor Legion during the Spanish Civil War. The aircraft could be easily identified by its fixed spatted undercarriage and inverted gull wings. Innovations like automated pull-up dive brakes, which guarantee recovery even in the event of a pilot blackout, were incorporated into its design. During World War II, the Ju-87 proved effective in close air support and anti-shipping missions, spearheading air raids in Poland and seizing Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. But during the Battle of Britain, it needed a large fighter escort since it was susceptible to fighter aircraft. The Luftwaffe used Stuka units in the African, Mediterranean, and Balkans campaigns, as well as in the early phases of the Eastern Front conflict following the Battle of Britain. Agile maneuvers are usually used by standard fighters to evade other fighters and take them out before they can launch an assault. But heavier, less maneuverable aircraft, such as bombers, have a complete crew of multiple men, necessitating outward-facing and rear-facing weaponry. For this reason, bombers employ tail gunners and ball turrets to point out several directions in which to protect the aircraft. Since smaller aircraft are slower and more susceptible to attack without additional protection or escort planes, they are utilized for dive bombing. The tail portion is in the way of the second crew member, who is positioned behind the pilot and equipped with a rear-facing machine gun or cannon. Since it enables the aircraft to protect itself without the need for escort aircraft or further defensive measures, this method is regarded as absurd. In response to opposing aircraft blocking their view and posing a risk of being shot in the tail and vertical fin, Nazi Germany created a special type of aircraft. In place of the well-known Ju-87 Stuka, which was renowned for its distinctive siren, they sought to develop the Junkers Ju-187, a vertically spinning tail dive bomber. During the Battle of Britain, the Stuka, which was highly respected for its achievements in the invasions of Poland and France, was exposed to opposing fighters. With a maximum speed of 211 miles per hour at sea level, the Stukas lacked the agility necessary to survive on their own or in an environment where other Luftwaffe planes did not totally control the sky. Consequently, a major improvement was required, and, despite the original Stuka's later success, the war's fast development in aviation technology rapidly rendered it obsolete. In the war effort, the Yonkers Ju-187 represented a major advancement beyond the shortcomings of the original Stuka. Designed in late 1940 or early 1941, the Ju-187 was a major improvement over the Stuka, inheriting the Stuka's inverted gullwing characteristic. The inverted gullwing of the Stuka was preserved in the new design, which increased its bomb load capacity. Because of its fixed landing gear, the early Stuka's aerodynamics were compromised. Retractable landing gear would increase the Ju-187 speed and aerodynamics. The Yonkers Jumo 211 engine was replaced with a 1776 horsepower Jumo 213 engine in the 187, which was a step forward from the original Stuka and could reach a peak speed of about 250 miles per hour at sea level. The 187's total weaponry was significantly more than that of the Stuka. The first Stuka version to be mass-produced, the Ju-87B, was contrasted with the 187. The Stuka was equipped with four 110-pound bombs under its wings, one 550-pound bomb under the fuselage, two forward-facing 792mm MG-17 machine guns, and one rear-facing 792mm MG-15 machine gun. With two forward-facing cannons, one rear-facing remote-control machine gun, and one rear-facing remote-controlled 15mm MG-151 cannon, the 187 was an extremely powerful aircraft. It doubled the Stuka's bomb load and improved both its offensive and defensive capabilities. It carried four 550-pound bombs under the wings, four 2,200-pound bombs on the fuselage in a semi-recessed bay, and four 455-pound bombs on the tail. Better armor was also added to the 187, 
giving it an even more potent weapon. A single design modification increased the 187's nose droop compared to the Stuka, improving the pilot's field of vision. The revolving tail was included to improve rear-facing crew member visibility and lessen the possibility of unintentionally firing the tail. But the tiny back wheel held the tail low to the ground, making it impossible to spin the tail until mid-flight. It is uncertain how the tail rotates because a workable model would not be created. The 187 spinning tail, which was intended to improve rear-facing crew member visibility and lessen the possibility of inadvertently firing the tail, was another distinctive feature of the design. The 187 project was abandoned in 1943, just as a full-scale mock-up was being created because of the special design feature and the requirement for a great deal of trial and error. With the introduction of modifications such as the JU-87D and JU-87G, the Stuka, which had previously demonstrated potential in dive bombing, was intended to further enhance its capabilities. There was really no need to continue working on the 187 because the Stuka had already been tested and the predicted performance of the two aircraft was not expected to differ greatly. It's been suggested that the plane with the revolving tail design that was scrapped did not perform well. But the handling shift that occurs in flight is a key sticking point. Mid-flight, the vertical tail fin would swing downward, probably under control, given that it only pivots the vertical fin and not the complete tail section, this begs the issue of how well the plane is controlled when rotating the fin. The handling would not alter significantly. The rudder must be positioned upright at an angle in order to guarantee proper rudder performance. With its contentious tail rotation idea, the 187 was a divisive aircraft created for military use. A shift in the rudder's position to represent variations in control was the idea. This idea, which would have complicated the airplane more, was never realized. Simplifying products for ease of manufacturing and repair was the main goal of war production. The Nazi leadership also did not think it was worth the extra complexity in relation to the possible advantages. Consequently, the 187 was canceled. Yet, it is still an important incident in the history of Junkers and the Stuka dive bomber. I have covered more than a dozen German aircrafts on this channel. To watch those videos, click the link on the left. To watch how, a P-51 Mustang shot down a Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet, click the link on the right. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.